Uh, that Cup Series kind of went like we want, right? We had the late pit stop. Hendrick beats him out. And for everybody that says you can't pass in the new car, next gen this, can't pass at Phoenix, don't tell Larson or Byron because guess what? Uh, Blaney passed them both to win the championship. Third yeah. generation racer, great guy. Uh, I'll be honest, all four would have been great champions. I hate it for Christopher Bell. Mechanical taking you out stinks. Uh, yeah. But in the end, Blaney, Blaney brings the belt. I love the energy that, you know, when that little tussle with uh, Chastain, that was oh. fun. And then, the, and then the interview afterwards, that's money. I mean, so that's... here's what I love. They both had the best thing, right? They were like, they, Chastain, did you know he's mad at me? I didn't care he was mad at me then. I don't care that he's mad at me now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's A+. Plus. Yep. And then the quote of the year. Um, so, Ryan, you got into the back of Ross Chastain. Did you mean to? <laughs> Effing right, I meant to hit him. <laughs> kind of like, I'm a Cup Series champion. You think I'm out of control in my car? No, I hit him on purpose. Yeah. I was like, this is the best ever. Squared him up, didn't wreck him. But didn't wreck him. Let him and know he was there. Him the, hey, you're number one salute. Live yeah. on NBC on the in-car camera. It was great. Over and over, right? Oh, yeah. We, get, we got the cackle. We went to the in-car, and we were like, and here it comes. You're number one. <laughs> Steve, I got a question. JGR ends their season with a blown engine. Uh, steering and now a rotor. Is this, if you're a crew chief, is there a concern or is it kind of like these are all one off that you're not overly worried? Well, you don't love it, um, but it, it just shows you that, you know, the, even the monster teams can have these issues. Um, the rotor shocks me because it's something that I thought could be an issue. So, how they got in this position, either cooling or usage or something set incorrectly, it is something they're going to have to look. The engine. Not a Joe Gibbs thing. That's TRD. Now, it, I know it all works together. But to be honest, whether you want to be concerned or not concerned, you don't get a vote in it. So you're going to smile and wave and take the next engine they give you. Uh, the steering thing, listen, I, I hate excuses. I can't come up with something else to keep Denny Hamlin out of the championship for than one mechanical issue at Miami. He was running good enough to do it. Um, so, I mean, I think there is concern, but I'm sure they're going to get to the bottom of it. The real issue is a non-championship winner. Chop called it. He just had the wrong guy. He had Denny Hamlin. Instead, it was Ross the Boss Chastain uh, going to victory lane. Shock. I was shocked. Yeah. And, and, and he didn't get any airtime either. <laughs> we guys saw that on social. He's like, you know, Ross won the race. I'm like, no, I don't. Did he? Yeah. How do he do? <laughs> that was Poor great. Rick didn't even give him Ross Chastain's wins and Ryan Blaney. We didn't even have Ross's name in the final lap. It was Ryan Blaney to the championship. But Rick did live up to his Rick Allen with uh, Mr. Larson. Oh, he did for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Larson had no – I mean, that's why I picked Byron pre-race because I'm like, well, Larson can't do it because Rick is Rick Allen. What do you make of Ross's racing? I don't have a problem with it. I really don't. Um, now, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. If I was his crew chief, I probably would have said, hey, man, let's get out of the way. We hope to be here one day. Let's not be in, in the mix. That's my opinion. That's what I would have asked him to do. But Ross has every right to do what he did. I don't think he was inappropriate. I don't think he laid a door on the 12 car. Um, I don't like it. But just because I don't like it doesn't mean it's wrong. I think that's yeah. my take. Yeah, I think it was, like I said, he was doing it right. He didn't, you know, I think it's fine. I mean, I mean, that's you're you're the. I mean, listen, yeah, I'm an I, analyst. He's a stack up, but you're the race fan. Yeah. Were you like get the hell out of the way? Blaney should have the right to go by. No, or? I think Blaney had to get it. I think he had to earn it. I don't. I don't like the idea that these guys, especially when you're from a betting's perspective, guys are laying not laying down, yeah, but, but they're they're giving over. the courtesy pass. Yeah. You know. Don't so be I, giving I, up five footers. I mean, let's yeah, let's, let's see it. Thing out. You're gonna do it. Do it. Yeah, I, I I didn't have any problem with it. And he got there. I mean. Well, and he had the fastest yeah, car all day. It wasn't. It wasn't like he. Well, not at the not at the end. He did uh, Chastain didn't have the fastest car. Well, but he had the fastest car. No, no, Blaney was better than Chastain the whole time. Yeah, if he ever could have got in front of Chastain, it was game over. So what turned the ticket for those guys to just? Man, I don't I know. I mean, they. You know, so I had this conversation. We heard the Blaney Ford, Ford, Blaney. Ford, and all well, year long. You know what Blaney said? We sat down with all the drivers, and he said, "These are my words, not his," because he was a little more eloquent. But basically, when RFK won and won at every, you know, Richmond, Michigan, Daytona. He, you know, basically Team Penske had to look in the mirror and be like, well, we better get our shit together because mm -hmm. that's a Ford body. That's a Ford motor that, you know, like sometimes and it's happened to me. Right. Human is you're like, well, they have something we don't have being the other manufacturers. Yeah. But then when the Blue Oval rang the bell three times at three different tracks, I think it kicked Penske. Not that they weren't hard, trying hard, but it was like the last straw where it's like we got to get our stuff together. But now, you know, what time it is now, guys, the time I used to love in school. We're not talking about effort. We're talking about grades. It's time to grade. It's a season-long grade. 
Chop has a spreadsheet with a lot of green on it here. We're going to get to him in a minute. How about the predictor? How did our mathematician, who, a.k.a. used to be the professor, will now be known as the wizard, Ooh, renamed? What? We had uh, a f- I, I'm, I'm not sure who she was exactly. Can we say uh, uh, public relations for a company? Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. A public relations person comes in the booth who knows the professor, knows Rick. I met her for the first time. Nice girl. But she knows the professor, and Ooh. she goes, what are you, the wizard? And I'm like, oh, wait a second. Yeah. That had a nice ring to it. Yeah, I like the wizard. So the professor might get a wizard's hat. Behind the ca- the he's behind, man behind the curtain? Uh, the man behind the curtain. Yeah. Don't look behind the curtain. The wizard, all right. And as soon as she said the- that, you can imagine what Stevie's face was like. I, it's all I was trying oh. to look at. Oh, it was like. Crazy. Oh, hey, look at he even changed his name tag on his. Uh, oh yeah, now we've shortened it to the Wiz. Oh, just the Wiz. He's just the Wiz. Oh boy, come on, yeah. Wiz. What's the story? what you got? All right, so. Okay, how do I say this? So we won outright four times. Okay, doesn't seem like a lot, but the predicted winner finished in the top two, twenty five percent of the races this year, and fifty percent in the top five. Okay, hold on. So if we would have bet your winner. Top five, we would have been right 50% of the time. Correct. And that would have lost money because there's definitely, yeah, more, right. It's, it's like minus. What about because they were, yeah, the, the guys that he's picking in a predictor were the yeah, exactly the favorites every week top yep. to 25% of the time. It's a top three bet. Um, still probably doesn't pay enough. It's, I'm saying that's probably a break even. Okay. I think what we learned is with five or seven races into the season, and I think it'll be less next year because the next gen car is returning. The head to head tool was the monster, no doubt, of everything. Yeah, and it was last year too. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that carried the season Which last really year and this year. Wiz, I'm not trying to pick on you, right? It's hard to pick the winner, but you can predict that someone's going to run like top tier versus tier three. Speaking yeah. of oh, tier two, you moved him up. Nope, should have stayed in tier three, Wiz. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was good. That's good. So we had we had some like if you go back and look at it, Martinsville, Richmond, Phoenix, Kansas, Gateway, Nashville, Indy Road Course were by far the best ones. So there we all had like seven of the top ten predicted right. Mm-hmm. Like seven of the top ten finished top ten. Seven of the top at those at those tracks. I was wondering if the top ten, if you took. The, the problem top is they kill you. It's like minus five hundred sometimes on like the favorites. Yeah. I think you would have to take like the like the, well, the six through tenth place guys that are even close to even. <sighs> but you know, it's that's kind of what we did though, and that didn't I think work. The predictor purely is. I think the tool is exactly what it is, which is a predictor. And I think looking at it at tiers, whiz, is the perfect thing because trying to pick an outright winner is it is near not impossible. Like let's just really hard, right? Well, yeah. But what the predictor has done. Is it has got us tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four. That helps in head to heads. It helps in daily fantasy, right? If two guys start in the back, you look at the predictor, and I feel like like we joked about it. Let's talk Kyle Busch, for instance. Monster name, people love him, high value in daily fantasy. But the predictor started fading him, and it was right when the predictor started fading him. He started fading. Yeah, yeah, and and some of those winners well, were so close at the top, right? So like. There'd just be like a half a point difference between the top three, and some of those guys would win, and that does just doesn't count for me. I feel like it it kind of predicted Blaney's come on too, because beginning of the year, middle of the year, that predictor he was you know low tier one, mid tier two, right? And by the end, you he was popping up in tier one. Is that is that just late? Uh... No, no, I agree. I think you you're exactly right. What I saw was. I liked the tiers better because we started to move drivers. A tier three guy would trend to right. tier two, and then all of a sudden, you know, and and you would almost start to see the. That'd be a good a graph of that, like something like that would be uh, beneficial. Got nothing going on for the next few months. We'll ask him. 